Good evening, folks. This is the Total Movie Recall live stream, episode eight. How are we all doing? I've got uh, two reoccurring guests with me today. Andy, you haven't been on in a couple of weeks, mate, on our live stream. How the hell are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting really bad like, double feedback here, though. Is, is, it, is it just me? I don't know. Yeah, you sound good to me, mate. No, I don't hear it. Okay. Give me two. You guys track on. Give me two seconds and I'll try and no sort No worries, brother. Badger, oh, how the hell are you, mate? How's it going? Freezing, my brother. That's why I'm looking like this. It's bloody chilly down here. I'm at my father's house. Um, I was helping him out because he's a bit sick right now. So I'll come down to help him and I'm bloody chilly, mate. Chilly, chilly, chilly. Um, yeah, we're a bit cold up here in North as well. Yeah, man. Um, summer's around the corner, so we'll be good. Um, but yeah, man, look, other than that, always jiggy, man. I'm bloody over the moon, man. Look, things are going freaking well for Mr. Badger. I'm extremely happy. Cannot complain. All some good stuff. Good, man. And aren't you on the eve of releasing a certain thing video as well that you've been working on? Oh, that's right. Uh, yes. Yeah. So tomorrow morning, uh, yeah, my long 50 minute long uh, video analysis on John Carpenter's The Thing will be released. And probably a week after that, I'll release uh, the, the my big ass review of the video game. Week after that, I'll be reviewing the pre the prequel. So put them all together, it's like a two hour long video. Uh, I've been working on it for months. Happy as hell about that. That's going to be out tomorrow. On top of that, I'm getting loads of auditions for my voice acting, which is going spot on. Been uh, exercising like a madman for the past month, so things are starting to fit me a lot nicer. So whoop, whoop, whoop. And um, yeah, getting healthier, getting stronger, always good. I just need to quit fags. That's the only thing I need to do. But until then, things are going jiggy. Mr. Badger's happy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to get my uh, summer body sorted out after seeing uh, Roadhouse recently. Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> putting his all to shame. Um, but yeah, folks, got a bit of a stacked show for you today. Well, actually, a uh, total lie. There's not that many news stories, but we do have an alien tier list for you at the end of the show. Um, but yeah, man, if you've got any comments, throw them in. We'll uh, finish the news segment, then I'll answer any comments after we've done with the news segment, guys. So let's not mess about let's get straight into it um yeah, like i said not many news topics today nothing of any real importance just a few things i wanted to wanted to touch on um first little cheeky one is jake gyllenhaal is obviously been doing the press tour for roadhouse at the moment and his batman audition was brought up for batman begins he did do a screen test for that film um, it come out, he said it was pretty cool that Christopher Nolan had like rang him up personally to say that he hadn't got the role. But um, yeah, he, he was getting interviewed recently and he said that it would be an honor to play the character still. This is like 20 years after the fact. Um, but I just thought it was quite interesting. Um, it goes on to say... Um, Jake Gyllenhaal was a serious contender to play Bruce Wayne in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, but it appears losing the role to Christian Bale never impacted Gyllenhaal's desire to play Batman on the big screen. Making the press rounds in support of his new Prime Video action movie, Roadhouse, Gyllenhaal was asked by Screen Rant, screen rant if he was still interested in playing the Batman. Oh man, that's a classic role. It's an honour. Um, and he goes on to speak about other roles and stuff like that, but I just thought it was quite interesting. I just wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on possibly Jake Gyllenhaal playing Batman. Now, like, we obviously know that the DCU is ramping up with James Gunn and he's got Andy Muschietti, who's directing The Brave and the Bold, which is the new batman orientated film for that universe. You know, like, could we see Jake Gyllenhaal in the role? Um, for me personally, like... Maybe, maybe. I'd have to be convinced a little bit. It's it's the voice that sort of like, I don't know whether I could see that voice under a cowl, but that's just me. He is an awesome actor. And, you know, Christian Bale, he changed his voice dramatically when he was under the cowl to the point where I think it's almost like you go and watch it back now. And it's a bit like, I don't know whether this was the best choice in the world. But anyway, a lot of growling. <laughs> But um... I've always, I've always disagreed with that. I've always liked his voice. I've never understood the hatred. 
never I've, I've always been the outsider on that on that regard there well he to be fair badger he's 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 doing something like pretty unique with his voice there so coming from someone who is a voice actor i imagine that does sort of tickle your taste buds but mate jake jillian hall as you know, a potential new Batman contender. He's still interested in the role. I imagine there's a little bit in the back of his brain that's like, yeah, man, I wouldn't mind playing, you know, Bruce Wayne. I think it's like for most male actors out there who don't mind getting into the superhero genre, a role that they'd want to play. But Badger, Jake Gyllenhaal, Batman, can you see it? Yeah, I can. But then again, I don't think it's saying too much because I can picture pretty much almost anyone uh, in the you know Jake Gyllenhaal's uh, lane playing as him, um, anyone in in that caliber of actors, you know, name them. You know what I mean? Uh, Brad Cooper, I think that's his name, right? Bradley Cooper. Yeah, he wanted yeah, to yeah. do it, and um, he wanted to do it. I can easily imagine him. I can also imagine that guy who's playing as Jack Reacher currently playing as him. Um, pretty much anyone like in that in that lane, I really can't imagine it. Um, yeah, I, I'm not too fussed about the whole voice thing. Um, it's not that big of a deal to me. Uh, as I said, I really liked Christian Bell's interpretation of what he did. Um, I could have played as Batman, up, by the way, <laughs> by um, our guy <laughs> video. No, no, no. Well, I mean voicing. I don't mean me. <laughs> Can you imagine me playing? Fuck that. Batman. Is that what you're getting in shape for, Badger? Yeah, yeah. That's that. Imagine that Batman getting out of breath after two punches. I don't think so. Um, now, our guy, Video Tasties, uh, did uh, want to hire me to do a little fan uh, audio book, and he wanted me to do it, but I just didn't have the time for it. He wanted me to play as Batman. I was like, you know what? Pretty dope. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I would have done something along the lines of uh, Christian Bell's shit, because I loved it. I loved Christian Bell's voice. So, um, yeah, I would have done something like that. So if if another actor comes along and does something, and they're wearing hockey pads or something along those lines, <laughs> I would have rated it. I'd, I'd rate it, so it's cool. Um, my favorite interpretation of Batman definitely is the Batman. I'm still shocked uh, by how much I got on board with that film, not being a Batman fan myself. I'm just blown away by how much that was up my street. And what Robert Pattinson did with that blew me away. That whole whispering thing he did with his voice. I was like, this is it, man. And I owe that film a lot because I finally, after 30 years, discovered what it's like to be a fan of Batman. I'm no longer on the outside, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so um something along those lines we'll see but if i'm honest with you and i'll end it with this real quick what i want to see far more in a batman film is not an actor doing an amazing job of batman that's not my real focus i just want a great film mate i just want another film that makes me go god yeah i'm on board with batman finally i get it now it's not just one film it's multiple ones give me some of this so we'll see mate we'll see but jake gyllenhaal why not yeah, man. Andy, Jake Gyllenhaal, Batman, can you see it? Is this yeah. a good choice? I can absolutely see it. I'm not going to labour on it too long. I don't have much to say about it. I think he's he looks the part. He's a good actor. I think for, for Batman, it's important to have a kind of a dark side. It's important that they can play, play him almost as an anti-hero, because I suppose he, he is to an extent. So, I think, like, Gyllenhaal's performance in, like, Night, uh, Nightcrawler, yeah, Night, Nightcrawler, mm -hmm. and even going back to like Donnie Darko, he has that kind of like edginess. He, he can bring that edge, that slightly kind of tortured side to a character, which is important for somebody like Batman, who ultimately is slightly psychotic. <laughs> End of the day, he's jumping about dressed as a he's a billionaire jumping about dressed as a, as a bat. So yeah, I think he's 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 matured into it. I think like. I appreciate why he was in the running back for the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah. But I think he's probably aged nicely now that he's more of a contender for it now than he probably was 20 years ago. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think the voice is a big issue. I think there's different ways to do it. You don't have to go. I think it's important to have that duality, like the way Kevin Conroy, Kevin Conroy does it very subtly mm -hmm. uh, with the kind of rhythm of speech, things down, octane and stuff. Bale went to extremes, like Badger had said. Uh, Patterson does a kind of whispery thing. He doesn't. He, he basically says by any little as Bruce Wayne, which then helps because you've nothing to compare it to uh, the way his film panned out. And he's got that kind of whispery, understated, uh, which which can be unsettling in, a, in another way. So I think there's different ways to do it. I don't. I don't think he has to have 
you know, a banjo level voice. Uh, it has to be an actor that can that can bring that gravity. <laughs> I think. <Get> just... <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I really like what Bill did as well. I think it just. I think it was a slow thing. Like I think it, it became. It gets parodied to death, but it didn't happen instantly. No, no. I think it kind of happened over the years, and to, and then you know people ran with it and made a lot of sketches and stuff. But yeah. No, I, I think John O is is, a, is an obvious choice i'd be quite happy with that yeah man definitely um right okay guys next story i have today is we're getting into a little bit of spider-man news so it is i'm excited now he's (laughs) spider-man's my favorite superhero i didn't know about this continue please i didn't know about this all right so i think this is all sort of speculation and rumors to start with badger so don't get don't get too excited here but so it's been said that tom holland's spider-man um is obviously owned by marvel disney and they share the rights with sony as well um i think sony considering their latest efforts with the likes of madam webb are wanting to get a financial success out of the spider-man ip um, so it's been said that they're considering shooting in fall of this year. Now, I don't know whether it's, you know, this is like a Sony push. I think Marvel, as in MCU Disney, want to step back a little bit and really focus on getting a story perfect and correct and right not just rushing into it but obviously sony are crying about the recent madam web situation going on so i just wanted to know because apparently they've got a couple of directors that they, they're looking at at the moment we've got drew goddard uh, and we've got justin lynn as well which i thought was quite an interesting interesting choice if i'm being honest justin lynn you know famous for the fast and the furious franchise and whatnot I think, you know, the man can definitely handle action and obviously big sets, big productions, high budgets. Um, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't say no to uh, Justin Lin. Um, it ain't like a nobody name where mm-hmm. you, they're just going out and hiring like a TV director because he can get them cheap and they're just going to boss them about a bit like a committee run sort of film, which I, I tend to think a lot of MCU films of late are, which isn't a bad thing. It's made them the successful company is what they are. But um, yeah, man, we'll just take a quick look at this story here. It says, Sony hopes to wash the taste of Madam Web out of people's mouths with a new official Spider-Man film that has the strength of the MCU behind it. The next entry of the Marvel Studio Marvel Studio Spider-Man franchise has been carefully planning its next steps as No Way Home celebrated the web crawler's film legacy, then ultimately took Peter Parker to his smaller roots in the end as a friendly neighborhood superhero. However, the previous trilogy director, John Watts, will not be returning for the new entry. So, yeah, these are our two sort of directors in the running by what it looks like. Um, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, folks, are we a, are we a fan of this one? Um, what do we think of Justin Lin as the directing choice for this film? Um, Badger, we'll go to you first, mate. Um, just want to get your thoughts on this new news. Yeah, well, <clears throat> um, I don't know too much about these two directors, so I'm not really too fussed about whoever will be directing it. But um, what I will say is that, um, again, just like what we were talking about with the Batman, surprisingly, even though I'm not really into these big epic things, surprisingly, um, I'm, I was a real big fan of those uh, Spider-Man films, mainly the first one and the recent one, No Way Home. Um, yeah, I was really bloody impressed with No Way Home. I absolutely adore that film. It's not even just the fan service nostalgia bait crap. Um, it was the fact that I thought it was very well fleshed out, a very well done story. I was so into that. And um, yeah, it's a wonderful uh, film. So I would like to see, that film had a great ending too, so I would love to see the continuation, the next part in that story. Not too fussed about the idea of directors and stuff like that. I just want them to not screw it up please don't get too epic um some rumors i've heard are that maguire will be coming back along with uh, yeah. the other 
the uh, who's oh, I can't believe my brain fart here. My brain's shutting down. Who's the other Spider Man? Andrew Garfield. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. God damn. How can I forget? I love that guy. Um. Hey, I hate those movies, <laughs> but I loved him as Spider Man. Apparently, the rumor is they're both coming back. Andrew Garfield and Tom- Toby Maguire. They're coming back for the next installment in the MCU. Like they're gonna collaborate again all three and it's like come on guys too soon man let's, let's just let that stand out that film stand out for what it was let's go down some new directions here man let's let tom holland uh stand out even more let him go to, on this amazing journey by himself and i think they should do because that ending of the last film was awesome i don't want to see what happens to him next i want to see him get out of that predicament <clears throat> without the use of uh nostalgia bait do you know what i mean so um yeah what I will say as well, though, can we please, for the love of God, just hire Sam Raimi? Yeah. Let's just hire Sam Raimi. Okay, let's forget this next film just for now. Let's go back to the well. Let's get Kirsten Dunst. Okay, let's get her back. The woman who played is uh, <laughs> some... Wait, what was her name? Um, Aunt, Aunt May. Yeah, she's still around in her 90s. She's still around. Get her back to be Aunt May. For crying yeah, out loud. I got enough retirement home. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a proper Spider-Man 4 and Sony can get lost and not interfere and force Venom back into the story like they did with the Spider-Man 3. <laughs> Let's just get that back. We want it. <laughs> Let's just do it again. And I want to see Bruce Campbell get that cameo as Mysterio. God damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, there was talks of that, wasn't there? For uh, What was it? Spider-Man 4 in the uh, Tobey Maguire trilogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. But, um... I, want another, I want another installment of that. But yeah, we'll see. Cool. Yeah, I will say if they do, if that is true and they're deciding to bring Toby Maguire back and Andrew Garfield, you were going to rip all the specialness from No Way Home straight out of that film. So that'd be a terrible idea to do. Terrible. But um, yeah, Andy, um, I know I don't know if you're aware of these directors or anything like that, but uh, uh, Spider Man Four with Tom Holland is this any interest of you? Obviously, Sony not doing great at the moment they need to get out of the spider-man ip genre if you ask me but um andy what are your thoughts on this one mate like what do you, what do you start with this <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's just i was really trying to think of something to add, add to it there but it's just it's just became such a mess hasn't it like i, I, yeah. I agree with what you're saying like i'm always there for spider-man i'm, I'm a superhero fan always will be even if even if I admit that it's probably too much of it just now, I think we're all in, a, in, a, in agreement there. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to turn down another chance to see Spider-Man. I'm always going to be there for any kind of Spider-Man um, related content, be it live action, be it animated, be it games, whatever. But yeah, I just think, just the, I, I don't really know these directors. I know some of the films that they've made and they, they don't make, they don't get me excited. So it's not yeah. like I'm like, oh, yes, this guy's going to be doing it. To be honest, I'm not sure I'm, I'm even excited about, about seeing Tom Holland anymore. Like he's he's a great Spider Man, but mm. like, I think we've we've just seen we've just seen a run of it. Um you know, the MCU is flagging a bit, it's in that kind of reset mode. They're trying to work out a new way forward to keep people hungry. Yeah. Um like I, I, I agree that I think they'd be kind of passing on the legacy and the you know, the the success of No Way Home if they just jump straight back into more more of like the three Spider-Man kind of thing. Yep. So I don't know. Um Toby Maguire was my Spider-Man. That's my era. As much as I like them all. That was like what yep. I grew up with. I was I was a 16 year old boy when that came out, the first one. Um perfect age. <laughs> <laughs> the, the perfect age for it. So I bet I maybe like to see that maybe and then almost like maybe they could like have turn turn about. So let's go back and maybe see like a, a Toby Maguire continuation. Then maybe let's see the next year or two years, let's see what Andrew Garfield's maybe was. And yeah. Go back to Tom Holland when you're like, you know, and that's your three Spider Man that you're playing about with. And then well down the lane, well, say well down the lane, maybe, maybe, maybe too old by that point, but you could maybe have another team up when people are hungry for it and kind of want it after they've seen some individual efforts. So I'd, I'd be more interested in seeing a continuation of the legacy of Spider Man characters than I am of particularly of seeing Tom Holland. But I also give you a list that like Sony are making a complete mess of the they're chasing the money. It's it's clear that they're chasing the money and, and the, the the fans and the quality of the content isn't front and centre. It's it's just about recuperating money and it looks as if, you know, the fact that Madam Webb is quite embarrassingly bombed and became the butt of all the jokes, it's as though they're just 
desperately trying to find a way to kind of salvage themselves and, and recoup the money, if you ask me. So I, I think it's a bit of a poison chalice. If, if I was one of those directors, I wouldn't be. I know it's all down to money at the end of the day, but I'd be kind yeah. of thinking, hmm, maybe not. Maybe <laughs> I've seen not Madam Web, maybe it's maybe, maybe now's not the time to jump in. Yeah, because obviously, like it, with them films being so bad, they are leaving a stink on, on Spider Man himself. Yeah. And you know, it's the MCU that's doing most of his story, like that's got. I would say 90% of like the, the story decisions go with the MCU, not Sony. So it is a total mess. It's a total mess. And I just want to say as well, Tom Holland, like I, I sort of agree with Andy that I'm a bit over Tom Holland, but it's a bit unfair really because I never think, I never thought he got a, a real fair shake at bit playing Spider-Man. And you might think that's strange because he's had three movies, but it was like an over, that was an origin story spread over three movies um, and it had the unfortunate thing going on where he was getting implemented in all these Avengers films and Civil War so we're just like a bit overrun with Tom Holland which isn't necessarily his fault so I'm, I'm in a weird I'm in a weird dilemma it's like yeah I'm a bit over Tom Holland but also I just want to see that friendly neighborhood Spider-Man like I don't want to see the half you know Tony Stark half Spider-Man situation, which is what we necessarily got. Do you know what I mean? Like at the end of No Way Home, he was it was all about him sewing up his new costume and stuff, which was taking it way back to basics, which I really appreciated. Yeah. But yeah, guys, um, Spider-Man Four. Um, I'm looking. You know, I, I want. I'm not. I'm not that looking forward to it. I'm, I'm not that hyped about it at the moment. I think uh, it, it, it's... Wow, I'm, I'm really surprised. I'm so surprised that I'm the one that's excited for it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I don't wow. know. I don't know, folks. I don't know. We'll have to see wait, what happens. But um, just, just keep probably... Sony away from it. Just keep Sony away because they messed up Spider-Man 3. Even though I do have a lot of fun with them, Jesus Christ, they messed up the two Venom films, right? Mm. <laughs> and, and of course, um, we got this too as well. We got Madam. So I've got Kevin and Hunter to go as well. God, oh. God, yeah, we'll get yeah. Um, <laughs> Paul Tams, who's usually on the stream all the time, folks. You can catch him on the channel quite a bit. Um, can't be here tonight. His voice has got no voice. But uh, he's saying, it's crazy that Sony has made one of the best Spider-Man movies in Spider-Verse at the same time made one of the worst Spider-Man movies in Madden Yeah, yeah man. that's it, Paul. Like, it's the, it's crazy the levels, like, the the difference in quality to shit. Do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, Paul's just going on to say... I think the PlayStation games are giving us the best Spider-Man Spider content along with the Spider-Verse movies. Yeah, 100%. I've not playing the games, but I know you two guys have and, and love Spider-Man too, didn't you? So I think you that... The actor, the actor who plays is uh, Peter Parker in Spider-Man in those games. Exceptional. Um, plus, he's in his 50s and he's mad in shape because he's playing as like a really young Spider-Man doing all the motion capture. <laughs> it's like, look, it works. This isn't like the Irish... <laughs> What's the deal with that though, Badger? Because if you remember, obviously, this, you probably won't be aware of this, Ellis, but when Spider Man originally came out in 2018, uh, uh, he looked completely different, but mm -hmm. facially, the, the, the 3D model that they used for him. And then when Spider Man Remastered came out for the PS5, they changed his appearance, but not the I, voice. So, so, who, so who's the. Um, I don't. I don't know, but I know that either way he did the motion capture. Um, his actual face, the actor's face, that's not his face. It was never his face. They just made never up his face. Right. Yeah, it's, right. it's not actually, <clears throat> even though he did the motion capture work, it's all it's him blinking, it's him talking, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's all his facial expressions. It's not actually a, you know, it doesn't actually look like him. It doesn't. So the voice, they, they, so the, yeah, the, the, the voice, the voice. you hear is also doing the mocap for the facial expressions, but it's just not his likeness. That's right. Uh, that's quite. That's quite interesting. I don't, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Paul's just saying here, the guy who they used the face design from asked for more money. Is that is that true? Or is that banter? Uh, I don't. I think that might be banter. I've never heard that before. I don't, I, that's yeah. the reason. But it makes sense in Hollywood. Um, yeah, all the stories I heard, it doesn't correlate with that. So I don't know if he's bantering with us or not. But if if you are being serious, Paul, just let us know. Maybe I'm being stupid. <laughs> It kind of pissed me off I, because I don't know if it's just because it's the first one you see, but I was kind of attached to the look of the first one. No, uh, I, I was. They changed it for remastered and then they, they stuck with that face for continuity. But 
annoyed me a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, a bit bizarre because the one. if they'd uh, re- redone the other characters within the game to look more like Zendaya and stuff like that, I'd get it. But just having, oh, we're just going to make him look like Tom Holland because why not? Like, a very bizarre choice, I think, to change it from game one to game two. It was it was bad, but um, it's not just the fact, oh, it's different. Oh, I'm used to the old one. I got attached to it. Where It's not even just that. It's the fact that this new Spider-Man face looks so much younger. When it, he looked, he was supposed he's supposed to be a lot older. Yeah, older. Yeah. He's supposed to be. He's supposed to be pushed. He was like 25 he's meant to be in the first game. And then all of a sudden, they remaster it, and he looks like 15. It's like, hold on, when he's hanging out with... When he hangs out with Miles Morales, there's no mentor student. It's not like that. It looks yeah. like two people hanging yeah. out. Hate it, but whatever. At least the games are amazing and the acting better than the game. And I think that's saying something. Well done to them. Remarkable Spider Man. I'm 100 times more excited about Spider Man 3 for the PlayStation or PlayStation 6, whatever it'll be, than any <laughs> any potential film for that way. Yeah, boys. Fair, fair one, man. All right, guys. Next little story we've got here. Um, keeping on the superhero train a little bit. Um, Batman, you were meant, uh, sorry, Badger, you were mentioned earlier on. Batman. You were big <laughs> Batman. <laughs> yeah, well, this right now, you are Batman now. Okay, Batman. I look like a Batman villain. I look like a villain. I'll admit that. I look like a villain who he takes on. <laughs> Batman, Love the way you just are... casually called him Batman. That's amazing. That's it now for the full stream, right? <laughs> Batman, you were saying earlier on you are a fan of your own film, The Batman, that came out a couple of years ago. Right, this one's just a rumour, guys. Little rumour. We're not going to spend long on it, but I like I like the actor in question, right? So, basically, there's a new casting rumour come out. Obviously, The Batman 2 has been delayed another year, so it won't be coming out till 2026. Yep. Grab me a But we've got... Apparently, this new casting rumour of Harvey Dent being implemented in Batman 2. And the actor in question for this one, if you guys are aware of Boyd Halbrook. Um, so this guy was the lead in The Predator, and he was also oh, the I villain. Yeah, he was also the villain in Logan. Logan. Yeah. Logan, yeah. Right. I really like this bloke. Like, mm-hmm. I've, even in The Predator, which isn't a great film, right, I do like Boyd Halbrook in the film. I think he's a good, solid, atypical action star lead who can deliver some quips. Really a big fan of it. So this, He is a good actor. Yeah, I think this was on the cards a couple of months ago, but he couldn't do it because he was doing other films at the time. Obviously, now this film has been delayed. Um, it says here, according to the new online rumour, Boyd Holbrook has been cast as Harvey Dent in the Batman Part 2. The rumour suggests that Holbrook was initially unavailable for the film due to his previous commitments to movies like James Mangold, A Complete Unknown, and Andrew Levitas, Last Meals. However, thanks to the Batman 2's delay, Holbrook's schedule has been freed up. So, just quick, I like this guy. I don't, Andy. I don't know if you were ever in Logan, and obviously he was yeah. in the Predator. Um, I think this bloke would suit Harvey Dent. He sort of lines up in that age bracket with Robert Patterson, whatnot. Um, I think he's due a bit of a juicy big role, and I think this could be the one for him. Boyd Holbrook, Andy, thoughts on Harvey Dent? Do you reckon this bloke could probably play him? Yeah, I think he's just like twenty twenties answer to Alan Eckhart, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, um, good shout, yeah. Yeah, it's similar kind of career as well, you know. When you like yeah. different roles in movies, but like the, the guys that are on the both actors that are on the fringe had they've had a go at being leading men, but you know, it's not really necessarily their fault that it never worked out. Maybe just picked their own projects. Like I think the Predator was probably the only movie that he's been the lead in when he was yeah. kind of at the peak of his powers, you know, like. He just came off. And he's good in Narcos. Like I've seen, I've watched the original Narcos, and then he was in Logan, and then he kind of graduated to that lead. And he probably thought the that was going to be his big break, but obviously it was a bit of a disaster. So mm. he's not really appeared as a as a leading man since. And then he was in Indiana Jones again and as a bit of a bit part. So he's maybe in danger of being cast as the kind of like second villain in a movie which which is exactly probably what the harvey dent character will be i would imagine in the batman part two so 
Yeah, I think, I think he's good. He it certainly kind of looks the part. Um, oh, yeah. Very similar aesthetic to Aaron Eckhart, so I get it. 100%. I think it, what they could do here is to not have him have the change if they were going to have Harvey Dent in this film, just have him as the district attorney uh-huh. through the entire film, save that for later on. Um, but Badger, you've obviously seen Boyd Holbrook in The Predator. What are your thoughts and feelings on this guy? I think you got my name wrong, motherfucker. Sorry, Bat- <laughs> Sorry Batman. Paul, Paul in the chat as well saying, no, 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 that's right. Very interesting little, it's not amazing or anything, but it is an interesting little time traveling type film uh, where he's playing as a de- detective trying to chase down this weirdo who yeah. keeps traveling through time. It's quite interesting. I liked it. It's good. A, yeah. Yeah, it's good. And, um, yeah, he's a real talented guy. And um, I think absolutely this will be a great bloody, I think it's perfect casting actually. Jesus Christ. I think. That's a bit that's a little bit too good actually. <laughs> I think, yeah, give me some of this. I want that. So please let it happen. That's um wow. Yeah, that would be great. And um it would be interesting to see. Yeah, we'll give it a go. I'm I'm up for it. And yeah, real good actor. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, man. I'm I'm a fan of this choice. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Um, all right, guys, moving on. Next story. Got another casting. Rumour for a, a giant franchise IP. Um, this one was announced last week, I think, but uh, obviously we weren't here last week. Um, Scarlett Johansson is in talks to be the lead of the new Jurassic Park film coming out next year, believe it or not. Um, so, yeah, this one was reported last week um, about this casting. It was reported about a month ago that David Leach, who directed Atomic Blonde and Bullet Train and stuff, was attached to direct the new Jurassic Park film. He ended up vacating that role and they got Gareth Edwards, who has just directed The Creator that came out last year, which I think we all we all sort of enjoyed. Um, I... You know, I wanted to bring this up for Scarlett Johansson, obviously. Um, I haven't really got much to say on her being the lead in this role. I think, yeah, she can do it. Not really sure what the film's about. But my whole thing is, I just wanted to highlight Gareth Edwards, that, you know, I was a little bit worried after The Creator because it made no money whatsoever. But luckily, it only cost $80 million to make, so it wasn't a major... D- for a film that looked like 200 to $300 million in budget-wise... You know, having that film not make loads of money, it's we're okay. We're still afloat here. So it was really good to see Gareth Edwards getting some more work here. And Jurassic Park, like, let's be fair, guys, like, he did a good job with Godzilla. Like, he managed to make Godzilla pretty scary in that film that came out. Uh, was it 2016 or something at this point? Or 2014? It might even be before that. 14. Um, but, yeah, I really like Gareth Edwards. Uh, most of his films, I thought he'd done amazing in Rogue One. Um, I think the key thing with Gareth Edwards is that he's so good at scale. So, like, he makes things in movies look really big and sort of, like, believable. Like, that halo jump in that first Godzilla movie is an awesome sequence where you've got the the guys jumping out of the plane and they're going past Godzilla, but you can only see, like, the, the side of him and stuff like that. It just, it's big, it's epic. And if I'm being honest, folks, like, as far as Jurassic Park movies go, I like the first one, I like the second one. And the rest are all just meh to me. Like that's 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 all I can say. So it'd be nice to see them reinvent this franchise a little bit, spice it up a little bit. We had Dominion that came out a couple of years ago that was god awful. It was should have been called Jurassic Locust, not fucking Jurassic Park. It was like it was just a bad film altogether. That they had the returning cast coming back, but that wasn't enough to save that one. But yeah, folks, new Jurassic Park film coming out next year. Um, sounds like they, they've got all this film sort of 
planned out already that Ed, Gareth Edwards is just the hired hand, basically, for this one. But, um, Andy, we'll go to you first for this one, mate. Scarlett Johansson, lead of the film, but I want to know what your feelings are about Gareth Edwards tackling Jurassic Park. I mean, I, if, we, if we absolutely have to have another Jurassic Park film, like, then, then, then he's, I suppose it, you've, you've highlighted why, why he's a good choice. But I don't know, maybe I'm just in a bad mood with franchises. <laughs> but I feel like it feels like every news story. It's not, it's not, you don't make the news, Ellis, but it feels like everyone's just like. I was scraping that, the barrel like, this week, folks. Franchise and an IP, maybe I'm just getting burnt out. But like, Scarlett Johansson is a great, a great actress. Uh, cracking body, what behind her? She's kind of proud. She's one of these actresses that's not. She she's been fortunate. I believe like Robert Downey Jr. of of uh, of late, who's been able to thrive and have success as part of the MCU, which is kind of looked down upon by you know certain directors and certain you know people within the movie industry. But she yeah. also has put in performances in the likes of like Marriage Story and stuff like that. Oh, very 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 talented actress so i kind of get it they've, they've had like mainly kind of male protagonists shall we say in the Jurassic park films i know you had Bryce, uh, dallas howard yeah um but really it was, it was chris pratt show as far as like the kind of action lead but as scott johansson has proved herself as the black widow and she can you know she can kick some ass she can carry that kind of she can do that kind of protagonist role she's yeah. a big enough star as well so I kind of get it if she's going to be the kind of lead, the proper lead of the of the new direction for the franchise. So, but I'm, I'm a wee bit surprised that she's jumping into that though, given that she's just kind of came off the back of a of a lot of MCU films that she's wanting to jump into that franchise. But maybe it's the opportunity to work with Gareth Gareth Evans. I don't know, um, or maybe she just loves Jurassic Park because she's the right age to have grown up with the originals. Yeah, I think you are yeah, right there. It's kind of like it's kind of like. I, but again, much like Spider Man, I'm not like I think the jazz. Yeah, the last the last two movies certainly in the Jurassic World franchise just kind of took the wind out my sails for it. You know, I'm not like I'm not super excited for more. So Yeah, totally. I think like you're you're somewhere near there with the fact with Scarlett Johansson wants to work on an IP. I'm I'm with you. I'm surprised that she's went for something as so big as Jurassic Park, like after the Marvel thing. But I don't think it's necessarily that she wants to work with Gareth Edwards. I think it's that she wants to work with Steven Spielberg because this is obviously going to be mm. produced by Spielberg. Still, it's his little baby. This one, so I think that's probably more in the in where she's think maybe <clears throat> thinking about it. I'm not sure, but Badger yeah, but- Jurassic Park. Are you a are you a fan of this franchise? What are your thoughts and feelings of this new casting and director? Well, I'll just say it very quick. Uh, yeah, I adore the first one, absolutely. Everyone can get lost. I think the second one is a remarkable movie and not far off uh, behind the second, the first one. I think yep. it holds up so well. Remarkable sequel. One of the best sequels I've ever seen, in my opinion. Uh, third one, I know it's got some horrendous crap in it, but I can't deny it. I like it. I, I think it's possible. It's like a 6 out of 10 for me. I like it. It's possible. Um, Jurassic World, I didn't care much for. I just thought it was okay. And I never bothered after that. I could see the direction it was going. I abandoned yeah. ship before it hit the iceberg. I jumped the hell out of that, man. And um, I watched it burn down. I watched all the other audience members <laughs> online tell me how bad it was. And I was like, yeah, I know. I just jumped out. The water was a lot better than that burning ship, I'm telling you. <laughs> so pretty much, I don't care about this new one. I don't care. I'm not interested. I'm really not. Scarlett Johansson, sure. But I guess it could work. She's a remarkable actress. First time I ever did a stream with Andy, we did speak about marriage story. And to quote Andy verbatim, She's got some acting chops on her, that's for sure. <laughs> He's completely right. And I said, that's absolutely right. And if anyone disagrees with that, watch Marriage Story. The Oscar nominations say it all. Remarkable actress. So, of course, she's going to be awesome in it. The Scarlett Johansson. But a great actress and a great performance can't save a film. I've got no hope for this. So I'll let everyone else tell me if this ship breaks. You know what I mean? If the ship sinks, everyone else is going to have to tell me about it because I ain't jumping on it. Not at all. Yeah. 
for me, it mean, would have to be a total reinvention of the franchise for me to get back on board with it. They'd have to do something really different with it. I think. I think for me, it's just it's the cat's out in the bag with the dinosaur thing. When when, mm. when Spielberg brought came out with Jurassic Park and the you know it was cutting edge, leading edge animatronics and CGI. People had never seen dinosaurs realized like that on the big screen. It was it was a huge thing. It was massive. It was global, and rightly so. You've struggled to meet anyone who's not a fan of that first movie. Um, but then once you've seen it over and over again, and it's got more and more CGI laden, it's a bit like The Walking Dead for me. And like the first couple of seasons, the the, the kind of zombies, the, the walkers were a proper threat. It was, you know, it was it was intimidating. You were worried for the survivors at what the, what the zombies could do to them. But once they evolved past that, and they were not, they became furniture. So it's like that's what's happened with the dinosaurs for me and the. Jurassic Park franchise. When I see one on screen, I, I I don't have the same feeling I had back in like the nineties watching it and being amazed at what's on screen because I take them for granted now. So it's well, like yeah. they're not, great they're not scary or threatening. A weird comparison. <laughs> it's great. But, it's uh, great. That's a brilliant comparison. That is, you've nailed it there, man. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They need met in the Spielberg films. To help, there was menace with the dinosaurs. They were scary. They were formidable. But once you've seen one dinosaur. And you've watched it and then you've seen the same dinosaurs in six movies. You're... Yeah, the peril's not there for the characters. If there's no that... peril, then what's the point? They're, they're toothless, toothless dinosaurs. Yeah, in that first one, you are bordering on like a horror film when the shit hits the fan with the dinosaurs, yeah. like especially the, the, the train car scene with the T Rex coming over. That's just like an all time sequence, but Samuel very, very are. horrifying. Remember yeah, Samuel Jackson's arm just hanging up? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, <laughs> no. But yeah, and by the when south... the raptors are stalking them, it's proper scary. You know, when it takes out the. It's awesome, stuff, yeah. Are oh, you know what, guys? You guys set me off. I'm out of it. I'm watching that film. Enjoy the stream. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are getting me gassed. I want to watch that. <laughs> right. Next story, folks. Andy, this one's for you. Do 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 do. Here we go. Right, last story of the night, guys. Aaron Taylor Johnson. What the hell are yes. you doing, boy? Right. Okay, okay. So the shit is sort of hitting the fan when it comes to Bond a little bit. I think we've all been prepared for this one slightly. I think Aaron Taylor Johnson has been in the running for this role for years. As soon as Craig was finishing up, I reckon they were looking at Aaron Taylor Johnson going, that's our boy there. And when Bullet Train come out, I reckon they were like, right, send this guy a bloody check in the check in the mail. We'll get him signed up. So the route it all booted off last week. The rumors were high, you know, like it came out that apparently he'd been offered the role for James Bond. Um then he come out and was like yeah, fuck that. I, I don't really want to do a franchise, if I'm being honest, when he's just about to be in Craven. So I'm just a bit like all over the place with this one, folks. And another aspect of this story that's come out recently that I'm not going to get into here that much, folks, is just I think it's got something to do with a production company, with stuff in Gaza and stuff like that. So people are trying to boycott the film. Don't really want to get into oh. that aspect of it here. Andy, I'll let you read on on in into a bit more on that one on by yourself. But yeah, there's a there's a yeah. whole boycott thing coming out about it. But I just wanted to ask you, like, I love this choice. I think I've I've, I've told Andy countless times that I think Aaron Taylor Johnson would be a great fit for it. It's 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 not just me. I think it's a worldwide sort of thing, like this kid's got it, man. One hundred percent. If he, he has got the dramatic chops, one hundred percent. If you've seen Nowhere Boy playing John Lennon and stuff like that, he is awesome. Don't just immediately think of like Kickass and all these major franchises that he's been in. So him coming out and saying that he doesn't want his path laid out for him in franchises. What are you talking about, Aaron Taylor Johnson? So I just want to get this quote up here because I thought it was like just insane. But like when being when he was asked about the, the role and stuff like that, I don't feel like I need to have a future drawn out for me. I feel like whatever's drawn out for me, I can fucking do better. Like, is he just being an asshole here or is he being... As a bold statement. 
what the hell are you doing, Aaron? Like, Jesus Christ. So, in my eyes, boys, this is, like, the biggest role that this country has to offer. And I think, like, what do you mean you're going to do better? What are you talking about? This is the role. This is the role. But anyway, sorry, guys. I just wanted to get this out here. Aaron Taylor-Johnson would be perfect for this. But I'm almost a bit like, bro, if you don't want it, don't have it. Jesus Christ, you crack on with your craving film, brother. Do you know what I mean? Let's but breathe. um breathe. Yeah, I know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's I'm not even the biggest <laughs> Bond fan here, but um Andy, <laughs> we will absolutely go to you first about this one, mate. Just I, I'm dying to know your thoughts and opinions. Have you seen all the hoo-ha in the last two weeks about Aaron Taylor Johnson? Then he's coming out and saying, you know what? Nah, I can do better. What? Andy. <laughs> What yeah, the hell do so, we think about this whole story? Right, well, yeah, so I, I, I'm a massive, massive Bond fan. I probably undersell it on my channel and stuff like that, but a huge, huge Bond fan. Massive influence on me and my on my kind of, uh, kind of uh, you know, film lovers generally. I feel like that's what kind of got me in, and I was I was obsessed as a young kid. Um, shape my taste and stuff. So anyway, so it's important to me, the Bond thing. Love it. Uh, the, the minute he, he's one of those, he's one of those kind of under the radar people that, like, when all the names are getting thrown about, Tom Hardy, Tom Hiddleston, Henry Cavill, all these names are getting thrown about. Nobody was talking about him. I wasn't talking about him. Nobody was, nobody was talking about Aaron Taylor Johnson. And then the minute people, some it got pointed out, everybody was like, "Yeah, that's him. like the majority of people were like, "Why didn't you think of this? Like, mm, great choice." Yeah. I think it's because he's been in a surprising amount of franchises and stuff. But once that yeah, happens. You know, being massive or haven't like went on like like MCU. He's been in the MCU actually, come to think of it. But he's not like became a major player. So because he's been in so many, he's became a bit of a chameleon, a bit of a grey man. I think people forget. Certainly, I, I forgot. I think that's why he kind of came out of nowhere when as a as a runner for this, which is what they want. They don't want someone who's too identifiable. Probably Kickass is his most the one that sticks on him the most. I, I would think, and that's a while ago now. Yeah, um, but yeah, he was amazing in Bullet Train. I think he's got what it takes. I think for Bond, I've read, I've read a lot of the original books, and I think um, for Bond, he's a flawed individual. Ultimately, that's how he was written in the 50s. He's basically borderline alcoholic, sexist, all the rest of it, which isn't really appropriate anymore going forward. But ultimately, what you can take from that original is that this is a real person, flawed individual, who was a cutthroat, secret eight, like, operative intelligence officer. Who's going to have to be a grey character, someone that can lie, cheat, steal, um, to get what he needs out of assets and license to kill and all that be cold blooded killer when he needs when he needs to be. So it needs to be someone that's got that in them, got that kind of like what we talked about earlier with Jillian Hall, that kind of like believable edge, um, that kind of slightly unhingedness. Which I think darkness. A darkness to them, yeah, which I think he definitely has. But he's also got charm. It's important playing Bond that you can have a bit of charm and you can potentially deliver a one-liner, you know, and and, and be believable as someone who can seduce people, you know. So I think I think it's a brilliant choice. I don't know what the hell he's playing at though with these comments. I don't know if he's got it. I don't know if he absolutely has it, and it's a bit of an in joke with Baba Broccoli yes. and that. He's now just trying to massively throw people off and come out with crazy comments that he knows are going to send. People like you, Ellis, like, I'm <laughs> crazy on, on stream. Am I overreacting? And that's though? what they want. Maybe that's there what they want. want. They want to build up the, build up the hysteria and have people, have people go on YouTube and go crazy about it. But yeah, if that isn't the case, he's been a very silly boy, like with these comments. Because mm. it's, it's actually harking, it's reminding me of the George Stazenby debacle. Because he did right. the same. He played him once. He got a ridiculous once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, not even a trained actor. There's, yeah, there's yeah. a contract for you. You know, the whole there's your life set out for you. You've got no acting ability. You're not a particularly great actor, but you could play Bond if you like for the next, you know, six films. And he was like, Nah, I can do better than that. Actually, I'm I'm hoping to get a branch out now and become a bit of a takeover Hollywood. <laughs> and obviously, the broccolis and Saltzman and all that just made a few phone calls and said, Yeah, this guy will never work again if that's what like we use. And that was it. So it's reminding me of that a bit. You know that he's like as you said, Ellis has been offered. One of the top jobs, not just in Britain and Hollywood, you know, like you think about yeah, it. Totally, as, yeah, totally. As, yeah. as a young guy like me who, like, you know, grew up fantasizing, wanting to play Bond, wanting to be Bond, 
there's only been six people, is that right, six people? Six actors that have just been in the right place at the right time in their lives to have the absolute privilege and honour of carrying on this legacy. He's now in that position and he's, he's, you know, he's seriously fucking with it and not respecting it, if you ask me. I think this, I think there's something in it where, like, I think this has obviously got more clicks than if he'd have just came out and said, oh, I'd love to play the role. I think the everyone, usual would, yeah. yeah, would just go skirt past it. But obviously there's people like me who are screaming. Not, I'm not like the biggest Bond fan. I'm just so aware of the, the, the height and prestige of that role, as we all are. But, um, yeah, Badger, what we are... What's your take on this one? Could you see Aaron Taylor Johnson in the role? And what do you think about his comments after <laughs> all the, the rumors came out? I'm trying to be careful now because just then, Alice, you transformed into Mickey from Rocky. <laughs> and, uh, that was insane. What are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> <laughs> You're no good, bum. <laughs> all right, Batman. You're no good, Jeff. <laughs> Aaron, you're no good. You just be bad. No, um, I, I'm, I'm not really too fussed about this. First of all, he is not going to be James Bond not after these comments. Okay, it's not happening. They're like, they're going to get rid of him after we settle this. I'm quite sure. But yeah, he would be perfect for it. Um, he is a great actor. Um, it's been awesome for me seeing him rise up because my introduction to him was in 2010 when I watched Nowhere Boy, where he played as John Lennon, little independent film and um, wonderful performance. And, um, yeah, real talented. So I think he could nail this. I do. I think he could nail it. But um, with that being said, I'm just not too fussed about this because I've seen how bad James Bond can get uh, with some of the Daniel Craig films. Some of them blew my socks off how bad they were. Mainly the second one, Corner of the Solace. Couldn't believe it. Um, that's a two-hour-long movie. And I think it took me like six hours to finish it. I had to keep pausing it and taking breaks. Um, it really was difficult. I still can't believe how bad that film was. I, I, <laughs> oh, you've been to um, us. Hey? Yeah, that's it. I think it's like an hour and or something. So if you're having to take pauses, that's bad. It was horrifying. I, I'm not kidding. That's literally one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. That's three out of ten is generous. I despise it. But um, the first one, Casino Royale, was remarkable. Coming from some guy who isn't this massive Bond fan, was raised with Bond quite a lot, but I just kind of grew up out of it. Not that it's childish. I'm not implying that. I just, my taste changed. No, no, yeah. yeah. I just didn't really like it that much anymore. I mean, I respect it all, just not fully for me, but a lot of it I do enjoy. Casino Royale's like, God damn, like, this is it, man. What a wonderful new interpretation of James Bond, man. Wonderful stuff. Then I watched the second one. Holy God, let's skip past this. And then, then we get Skyfall. And I am blown away. I honestly think it's better than Casino Royale. That's the best Bond film I've ever seen. One of the best action films I've ever seen. One of the best sequels I've ever seen. What an outstanding piece of cinema that is. Just cannot get enough of that film. I wasn't a big fan of the one that came out after that. I thought that was pretty mediocre. And the last one, plenty of brilliance in it. Plenty of brilliance in it. But uh, a lot of cack in it. <laughs> like they messed up loads of it, namely the villain. Um, wow, yeah. I just thought so underwritten, so many flaws, even though there was a lot of brilliance in it. That that um forest fight scene. Oh, uh, brilliant. When it's all misty, it's like just yeah. give me some of that. Also, a very clever ending for a James Bond movie. Very different. Yeah. So regardless, I literally I literally think the Daniel Craig films, half of it was incredibly bad, half of it was brilliant. Uh two remarkable two and a half remarkable movies, two and a half. Uh, not so good ones. So I'm quite nervous. I am quite nervous um, what we're going to get next. I want it to be awesome, but I don't think it lies in the fit in the hands. The, the fate of the franchise doesn't lay, lay in the hands of this guy. I guarantee you he's going to get fired for these comments. And um, <laughs> even if, if it doesn't work out, though, if that doesn't happen, I mean, and we do, and we do get him, give me some of that. Okay, I'm turning off my mic. Yeah, give me some of that. I will. Right, guys, no worries, man. I think, as far as Aaron, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson goes, he's the full package. Get him in this role. And I think, to be fair, I think if the Broccoli's have had him in mind for this long, 
these comments aren't even gonna gonna deter them from still hiring him, I think personally anyway. But um right guys, we'll get on to our last segment of the night, which is our tier list, as always. For this week, we're getting in we're getting into the alien franchise. Now, before we get into this tier list, I need to ask you boys because it was like unofficial trailer week last week, and we got about five, 55 different trailers, um, all all pretty good of, of 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 quality. But I would say the best trailer that we got last week was by far Alien Romulus. Now, before we get into the tier list, I need to ask you both about the Romulus trailer. Um, Andy, what were your thoughts on the new trailer, mate, uh, by Fede Alvarez? Did you have a chance to see it? Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on the new trailer, man? Yeah. I did, and I, I really enjoyed it. I found it quite surprising. Very short. Um, yeah. It's almost just a teaser, but I thought it was, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty intense trailer, very much in the in the vein of the original Alien movie. And then I actually went on to watch, like, a, an official interview with him, with Fede Alvarez. Yeah. That you can get on YouTube. I think it's about 25 minutes long. Um, yeah, I watched about, that one as well. Did you watch that one? It was actually really yeah, good. Yeah, he yeah. talks about how, um, it, you know, he, he kind of went back to basics with this one and he thought, well, what's everyone's favourite alien films? It's alien and it's aliens and they're two very different films. But so he, with this one, he's basically trying to like combine the two. Yeah. <laughs> and even the yeah, timeline yeah, yeah. is set bang in between the two. So, so yeah, I, I think going back to his horror roots, it's good. He's an established. Um, Someone who's taken a, a franchise before and kind of revisited it from, yeah. uh, you know, from a much more gory, much more um, intense kind of horror angle with like is Evil Dead, dead yeah. Evil Dead, <laughs> for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for a, for, I just talk crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Evil Dead. Yeah, was, uh, <laughs> yeah so I, I'm excited for it. Like I wasn't excited for it. I like Alien. I'm a casual Alien fan. I appreciate the massive. Um, impact has had on this on the sci-fi genre and, and the huge kind of pop culture that it's spawned but i'm someone who's very casual with it and on the sidelines to be honest but that's got me excited and i'm not a big horror fan but you know that that that, that trailer definitely got me excited cool man uh badger did you have a chance to see the romulus trailer yes sir i did and um it looked good I keep I keep very I'm quite trepidatious like when it comes to these films because obviously we we have experienced some some cack <laughs> with the, with this uh, with this universe but yeah I am very intrigued by it. The only real thing that gives me hope is the director. Um, that is it really because I'm a, I am a fan of this guy's work. I don't breathe with a solid film. Evil Dead remake is definitely one of the best horror remakes out there in my opinion. I wonder, well, I don't love it like a lot of you do, but I do like it a lot. And uh, as an avid Evil Dead fan, ooh, I was very impressed with how much it, you know, um, lived up to its name. Yeah. And um, yeah, I am just quite nervous about this. Uh, I am curious about one thing. I don't, I've heard rumors and I don't know, and I've tried to avoid all the spoilers, but I, it might be connected to uh, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. It might be a sequel. And I don't know if that's the case. No idea. So as being revealed, this is public knowledge that it takes place between Alien and Aliens. I know. So, yeah. I know. So I don't know how much of like a sequel to Prometheus and Covenant it could be. Do you know what I mean? Because they take place prior to that. But um, yeah, man. Freddy Alvarez, I trust him, man. Like them two films, Don't Breathe, awesome. And Evil Dead is slowly but surely over like the last 10 years become like a much not better film, but I've appreciated it more and more with each watch. Um, mm -hmm. It's a bit of a go-to horror film for me now. Um, but yeah, guys, let's get into our alien tier list. Um, just a little disclaimer beforehand. Um, we tiered um, Alien vs. Predator and Requiem on our Predator live stream. So if you want to hear our thoughts about them two films, you can go and find that one on the channel. I'll probably just leave the link down in the description for this video. So we're only going to be talking about the core Alien films today, which is obviously um, Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, Resurrection, Prometheus. And Real Covenant. quick, 
not trying to take control of the show, but can when we when the time is right, can we actually uh, get Andy's thoughts because he wasn't there for that uh, stream? I want to hear what he has to say on those two things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll keep it for the end because we'll just get our quick thoughts on that one, Badger. Just mm -hmm. I want to keep the time going, but, guys. Right. So first off, we've got Ridley Scott's Alien that came out in '79. I think it was 1979. Um. So, yeah, I, I've rewatched all these films prior to this. Um, uh, this week, I actually watched them with Georgia, my partner, which was her first time watching them. Um, just a brief thing. She, she liked Alien, thought it was a little bit slow, absolutely loved Aliens, and she appreciated Alien 3. Didn't get a chance to watch the the masterpiece that is Alien Resurrection, but um, I don't I don't I don't think she'll be missing much. Um, we'll get to that we'll get to that one though. But um, as far as my thoughts go on the seventy nine Alien film, I think this is like an absolute masterclass in horror tension. And like, if I was a, a student, if I was a teacher at university, this would be the film that I would teach in that sort of aspect of how you build tension and stuff like that because we i think we only get about five or ten minutes screen time of the actual xenomorph in this one but i will say this film after re-watching them all this film is without a doubt the best looking alien film that there is 100 like the shots of the space jockey when you initially go in at the the ship is like just mind-blowing it's so so spectacular and when what, one thing I will say, folks, if you haven't seen the behind the scenes documentaries on these four first alien films, highly recommend it. And you'll just see the scale of the space jockey and stuff like that. But yeah, this one, I will say it, it, it's, it's a little bit slow, but I feel like it's only slow because it's it's building up that tension and, uh, and it really does sort of pay off by the end of it um i think the xenomorph looks spectacular in this one i think it goes by the name of big chap obviously got a guy in a suit playing this one i'm not sure if it was the same guy who also was playing the predator might be wrong on that one no 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 no, 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 no. different it guy right mm -hmm. but, yeah so, yeah i think they've like they've got this actor playing in in this suit for the xenomorph and stuff like that and Fede alvarez did say that he was having like more ana animatronics and people in suits for this new alien film oh, but, oh, wow, but yeah, wow. yeah great yeah highly great. recommend watching that interview badger go on, it's about 20 minutes long watch it it's it's quality it doesn't spoil anything but he reveals some exciting stuff in there but okay. yeah folks just as far as this first alien film goes i think it's a horror masterclass and in 1979 i don't think there were many films that looked anywhere near this good if i'm if i'm being honest like the lived in aspect of the technology and stuff that's on the ship uh the nostromo i think it's absolutely awesome awesome um i don't think this is ripley's like best performance in the franchise it's quite an understated performance from sigourney weaver in this first one mm -hmm. um but yeah it's awesome it's absolutely awesome it's not my favorite in the franchise but if I was going to tear this, it has to be an S tier. Like, your simple fact of, like, this is a masterclass in horror tension. But, mm -hmm. um, Badger, mate, what are your thoughts on Ridley Scott's first Alien film? Yeah, um, well, this is cinema. That's what I'll say. Right there, this is cinema, in my opinion. Shaped my taste in films. I've been watching uh, the Alien films since I was way too young. I was about seven. Yeah, probably about seven when I saw it. And, of course, as much as, as scared as I was, didn't give a damn. It was like watching Predator for the first time. I didn't care how scared I was. This is amazing. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Never seen anything like it before. And to this day, it holds up. Yeah, of course, as it's slow bits. I don't give a damn. I don't care. They need it. I don't want it to be fast paced all the time. The pacing is just remarkable. The mythology, the ecosystem of the uh, Xenomorphs and all that. Some of the most intriguing things ever. The backstory with the space jockey, it's incredible. The theory of maybe the space jockey was carrying the alien eggs to attack a different alien species. It's like, oh, that's amazing. Um, all these amazing forms of uh, like fan theory and uh, you know the story going on off screen that you don't know, that you, you're never directly told about. It's amazing. I also love the... Um, Oh, I can't believe I uh, my brain has fogged out on me again. What was the name of the Ash? There we go. The yeah. robot Ash. Yeah, when you discover that he's a robot, it's an incredible thing because when you watch it for the first time, he doesn't look like a robot. He just looks like he's just 
a bit off here and there. But when you rewatch the film, you realize that's a bad robot analyzing coldly the situation. It's just so creepy. It gives me goosebumps. What a remarkable, stunning achievement in filmmaking. It still holds up. H.G. Giger or Geiger, um, his artwork, it's just incredible. Very disturbing in many areas, especially when you factor in that the, I'm not talking about it because it's triggering for some people, but the fact that a load of it has a load of grape metaphors, the the word that rhymes with grape, that's what I'm going to say, because um, I don't want to trigger our beloved listeners. But um, yeah, um, the fact there's loads of those uh, metaphors and all that in the mm. background, big commentary on that. I think it's very clever, very intelligent. And um, it's the only, it's one of the very few alien movies where I'm forgiving of the fact that the alien looks like a human. I'm quite disappointed in Hollywood aliens. Most of them look like us. It's quite disappointing. Uh, but in this case, I will forgive it because they come out of us. See, no morph. They come from us, so they morph into us. I think it looks great. It's an outstanding um, alien design. And um, oh my goodness, what a remarkable film this is. Just ingenious. Where would you rank it, mate? Uh, D, maybe C, uh, S, S all the way above S, Z, Z. If this isn't, this is somewhere in my top 10, man. I think this is like my seventh favorite movie of all time. Um, yeah, is this your favorite one out of the franchise? Can't pick, I can't pick between the first and the second one. I it's kind of like the Star Wars trilogy, I put them all in one film. This is part one of a film, in my opinion. Alien and Aliens, I can't pick. I just can't. I don't know how to do it, mate. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> Disappointing answer, you know what I mean? Well, maybe it's Andy, mate. I'm going to have to get up solve that for you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, Andy, what's your thoughts on the, the first Alien film in the franchise? Really Scott just, epic. Just see it straight into the, out of the world, out the, out the trap that it's a, that it's clearly F tier, it's a massive movie, huge, you know, kind of pillar of cinema history in the sci-fi horror genre. It's probably, if someone says to you sci-fi horror, it's probably the first film that comes to mind, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, man. I'm just saying, sci-fi horror, give me, give me a movie, you're probably going to, you're probably going to go to your locker and pick out Pillar of Alien. Um, yeah, it's just it's like as the budget says, it's the tension, it's the yeah, I think HR Geiger's um you know, creative kind of uh, input behind it is massive. Yeah, I don't think it yeah. can be understated how massive that is for like the yeah. overall aesthetic and even the ships gothic, even, even yeah, the gothic, the the, the, that kind of creepy, unsettling gothic um flavor that he brought to everything but the, the lived in aesthetic as well of the of the ships you know that kind of like kind of similar to like star wars in, in a sense and that like that clever idea of saying that something's in the future but you know but not going the other, not going that futuristic everything shining chrome way going the other way that it's like almost yeah, looks like, like it's set in the past sometimes bizarrely if, if that makes sense yeah, yeah. watch the watch it now when it's 1979's idea of, of the kind of downtrodden future. But yeah, just I mean, the tension, the slow keeping camera angles, the, the also give you time to appreciate the setting and take in the 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 art, you know, the the I mean it's going back and think so can't get the can't get the terminology out. <laughs> the set the same it, stuff that's what I'm looking for. It's quite progressive as well. I think that in that well, it's progressive right up until Ripley's in her pants at the end. But it's it's progressive yeah. in that like it's a, it was a female, attack, you know, scream yeah, queen. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's great. It does that so well that it's like all, all the all the you know all the all the kind of macho alpha characters get picked off one by one, and you're left with like Sigourney Weaver, which back in 1979 would have been. I'm not saying there are other films that, that had female leads and stuff, but you know. Kind of, kind of slightly ahead of its time, right up until you know, and then they can show their, show their true colours when they stick it in pants at the end. But yeah, <laughs> she's but the other, archetype other, other for the female that. lead. Yeah, she and she's amazing. At it. You know, like you wouldn't want yeah. a male lead in that. It's, it's, she, it, it brings that little bit of vulnerability. And like Badger says, there's maybe that on those kind of undertones of the kind of the grape. <laughs> As Badger put it, the, the kind of grape themes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The body horror element is unsettling. Everything, the subtleties. Obviously, now we've got we've got a big franchise, and you've got theories on the space shock and all that. But when that came out, 
people maybe wouldn't have been theorizing that you just kind of you know less is more the unknown people are scared of the unknown so when you introduce strange background circumstances like that that don't really explain it, it it's it's kindle for you for for the powers of your imagination you know and that's what less is more. attention that's what that's what racks it up and makes the, the xenomorph absolutely terrifying when you start to kind of piece together yourself what yeah. this alien kind of culture is all about and and how, how they operate but yeah amazing amazing movie yeah we'll move on to uh the next one in our franchise here we've got aliens now this is far and away my favorite out of the franchise i think cameron just like elevates everything to 11. so he takes that initial idea and just adds all these extra toys that make it so special it just like after watching it the other day, like I will say it, it it loses a little bit of steam in that middle bit. So there's a section where they're cornered in and they've got the guns on the outside areas, basically losing all their ammo. That section goes on for quite a quite a long time, and I was I noticed it when watching it the other day. I was like, yeah, it loses a little bit of steam in this section, but you've got the characters in this one. So you've got obviously like Hicks and Hudson and like all the colonial Marines are all absolutely fire and dripping with charisma, like Fasquez and stuff like that. Like they're all so cool, man. So in them quiet moments where there's not a lot of action going on, you've got all these charismatic characters in aliens. So you like, whenever I think of aliens, I always do think of the characters um, whereas when I think of Alien, I think of Ripley and the tension sort of type thing. Obviously, you've got John Hurt and Ash and all these other people in the first one. But the second one where it really shines and really, you know, like Michael Bean is like Hicks and stuff like that. I love all that. Love all that. Um, but yeah, this is absolutely phenomenal filmmaking and especially the the ambition to go that big at the end with the power loader and the Queen Alien. like it's all being done legit. Like there's no like CGI elements. Like they're all like miniatures models, like actual practical shit going on in front of you. And you can totally get that vibe from it. But um, yeah, I haven't got enough praise to say about aliens. I think Cameron took the baton and just boom, he ran with it. And he just absolutely nailed every aspect of this franchise. Um, you know, I, this is S tier for me, definitely. Maybe it'll it, it come in just after Alien, just because Alien had the initial idea in the get-go. But if I'm sitting down one night to watch an Aliens film, it is absolutely the second film in the franchise. Uh, Badger, I'll just get your thoughts and opinions on this one, mate. Obviously, I'm going to rank this one an S, but how about you, mate? Aliens. <laughs> That's it. Put it in S. We're done. Let's, let's keep it We're done. It's a done deal. I just but, look, um... I can't pick between the first and second world fam. I can't pick. Um, it's just remarkable. Um, the characters are outstanding. What's uh, I, I love Hicks so much, man. The actor who plays is in Michael Bean, one of my favorite actors of all time. He played as Carl Reese in the first Terminator, which is one of my favorite characters of all time. Um, he's a remarkable actor. He did a great job here. I adore it. And um, Bishop as well. Yeah. Of it. Sigourney Weaver, easily the best performance of her career. The, the maternal instinct is for absolutely fantastic here. She yes. truly comes into her own. She gets a wonderful extra backstory with the director's cut, which explains why she ends up adopting kind of uh, Newt. And um, I think it's just all absolutely beautiful. It's incredible how they expanded the mythology of the first one by talking about the alien queen and seeing the alien queen. Absolutely remarkable. One of the best third acts ever. Um, I just can't pick between the first and second one. I can't. They're both they're both the seventh favorite, my seventh favorite film of all time. They're both like right there together. They're the same film. I can't watch one without the other. That's it. And um, I'll say this incredibly quick as well. Bishop, <clears throat> spoilers as well for the end of the film. Uh, Bishop, when he gets, why did I say that? We've all seen Alien, <laughs> but still, <laughs> at, the end of, at the end of the film, um, what happens to him? What does the Queen do to him? At the end she of which? At Alien. Oh, at the end of, right. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Is that scene incredible when she puts the uh, towel straight through him? But the Queen grabs him, the Queen takes Bishop 
pun, chess pun. I love that. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. It's a chess joke. I love that. The queen takes bishop. I love that. I was like, <laughs> I see what you did there, Cameron, you little nerdy oh, bastard. Hey. <laughs> like, I love it. I love it. Love it. <laughs> so yeah, Andy, aliens, are you a big fan of this one? Is this is this the one that does it for you the most or I'm I'm not a big fan, right? Uh, I'm not gonna get what? super controversial here. It's just it, no, no, listen. It's not what it's not how it sounds. I've not actually seen aliens a hell of a lot and I and I've absolutely no excuses as to why that's the case. Like I I, I don't know why. I just All right. didn't really kind of grow up with it. I remember seeing a clip of it when I was really young and being quite captivated by it, by the atmosphere of it and everything, being quite kind of scared, not really wanting to watch more, but not wanting to at the same time. Um, Alien, I've seen, I remember watching the first Alien when I was about 16, 17, and being like proper taken by it. And that's a masterpiece that gets in your head and everything about it's, you know, great cinema, like Bard said. Aliens, I just didn't come on to until I was maybe in my late mid-20s, and I watched it and I thought, oh. yeah, it's great. Oh. I, I think it's a good film. It's a great film. I'm not going to try and convince anyone otherwise. But just for me, personally, I think I would revisit Alien more than Aliens. The, 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 it's just it's the same thing, just like retu- retuned. Like the, the Ridley Scott delivered a slow burn, fantastic claustrophobic horror, and then James Cameron and just like stripped the engine out and, and put in like an action horror engine. And it works equal, just equally just as well. So it really just depends on what you what you want. And nine times normally, if you were to present me with those options, I would go for. The action oriented movie but for some reason i've just not seen it as much but it, it does have that proper like fist pump hollywood blockbuster quality to it like talking about that ferry alvarez which is missing in the in, in alien ferry alvarez interview that we've both watched where he, he recounts a story that he heard from james cameron when he screen tested aliens people were in silence the whole film and they were like i don't know if they're enjoying this or not i don't know do we have them or do they not know what they're watching are they offended yeah, and uh, until the whole uh, line at the end and the loader, but it was was yeah. is it back off, bitch? Is that what she says? Get away Get from her, you bitch! Yeah, away from her, yeah. bitch. That's it. It's proven that I've not seen that much because I'm not one hand with it. But yeah, and, and at that point there was like an audible cheer and a fist pump, and then they're like, ah, we've had them, we've had them the whole time. It's just that they're so gripped, and you know, and that's what that's what Aliens has. It has those kind of like fist pump, heavy hitting blockbuster moments that only directors like Cameron can give you. Yeah. So for me, it's probably between S and A just because I think I just prefer Alien to it, but I've not seen it in a long time. And I'm actually looking forward to watching it again when the when the 4K comes out. So between S and A for me. We'll go just be fa- behind the first Alien for me. I think that's that'll be the it for the S tier tonight. Yeah, um, but yeah, Badger. I'm going to go to you first for Aliens 3, mate, and I will be back in one second. But if you want to give us your quick thoughts and opinions on oh. Alien 3, mate, I know you're a bit of a fan of this one. so That's why he's getting me out of the way. <laughs> Imagine you go for this one. I'll be back in one second, guys. Yeah, right. So to all you uh, Alien 3 haters, come at me. I don't care. Flood my DM <laughs> with all your swastikas. I don't care. I don't care. You you lot are just going to have to handle that someone's got a different opinion to you. Um, yeah, look, I think this is a fantastic sequel. I will extend the olive branch here, and I will um, admit it's incredibly disappointing in areas. I will completely admit this. Uh, plenty of the characters who you loved from the first film, they just get killed off before the film even starts. Absolutely awful, and it has set a precedent for many complaints. If a character gets killed off before the film starts, they caught an Alien 3. Um, that's what happens. Oh, they did the Alien 3, so Terminator Dark Fate. And when John Connor yeah, got killed, the, it's the same thing. John Connor got killed at the beginning of um, Dark Fate. Oh, Alien 3, they did an Alien 3. It's a sequel to a, um, um, <laughs> it's a sequel to what's his name? I, again, Brain Fog. What's his name? The guy who directed Aliens and Terminator 1 and 2. I, I can't believe he's James one of my Cameron. favorites. James Cameron, Brain Fire happened again. Um, it's because I'm trying to multitask, not um, speaking, and not having a Tourette's flare up. So forgive me. It happens. Yeah, another yeah. another sequel to his work, and they do an Alien Three, just like Dark Fate and all that. That's what they always say. So I admit it's disappointing. It's so disappointing that these characters get killed off, but I still think the story is fantastic. 
I love the fact they went from big and epic to small and grounded. One alien in a in a prison, and a, what the hell? And now you've got Sigourney Weaver, who was remarkable in this film, by the way, just exceptionally good in this film. Um, Ripley is such a great character here. Just how she has to manage herself amongst these men, yeah, and how her presence challenges their faith and their faith in God. Uh, because they've uh, they've uh, you know they've made an agreement with uh, God to be celibate forever because they're you know grapists. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, because they are, and now all of a sudden she appears, and it's like, hold on, what the hell? What the hell, God? Why are you doing this? And I love that how she challenges their beliefs and all that. It's amazing, and plus it does expand the uh, xenomorph uh, myth mythology because um, we now because in in the theatrical cut, it comes out of a dog, but in the assembly cut, it comes out of an ox. And that's why this alien, in whatever cut you watch, the alien is running on all fours. It's running like a dog It's uh, or an ox. It's extra quick. It's adapted to the DNA of what it, of its host. Makes you wonder, oh my god, if it comes out of a bird, can it fly? What if it comes out of an octopus? Does it have eight arms? Like, what the heck? It really does get your imagination. I, I don't want to see that, by the way. I do not want to see the octopus version of a xenomorph. <laughs> No, um, that would be like the predator when you see a giant predator. Just no, awful. Um, but it does expand the mythology very well. I think it's great. Um, I love it. I think it's excellent. And I can't remember the actor's name. I've never remembered it. But the big black guy in it with the glasses. Yeah, he's great. Oh god damn, it's amazing. It's mm. just amazing. This performance, the speech he gives, man. Do you want it on your fucking knees? begging i ain't much for begging i was like oh my god <laughs> he's just getting me pumped i love the music i love the atmosphere and considering that it was such a freaking train wreck to make it was made it was it it was being shot before they even finished the script it had multiple rewrites poor david david fincher was as he put it ritualistically sodomized by the company as he <laughs> that's, that's what he said it's what he said and considering all that, you know what? I really do think it turned out pretty goddamn well. I know it was it's an unnecessary sequel. It doesn't do too much, and it just kills off characters you love. I know it's problematic, but I think it's so freaking well done. I just the only thing I would change about it is that I wish Hicks and Newt were there all the time. Having a little girl there with Hicks, the father figure, trying to figure out how to protect his missus, you know what I mean? And the little girl would have been exceptional. And um I'm absolutely in love with Alien 3. I am not in a rush for it to get retconned, but I do still want that uh, you know, that um that new sequel that was gonna get made by the director of um yeah. sorry. Neil Blomkamp. There we go. Blomkamp. There we go. It's my Tourette's guys, it's really screwing me up tonight. Sorry. Um oh, yeah, sorry. pretty much thank you, man. Thank you. Um yeah, I wanted that sequel where he was gonna do a direct sequel to aliens and retconned alien 3 i wanted to see it at the same time i'm not in a rush to see this one get deleted because i i freaking love it it's nowhere near by the way of course nowhere near as good as um <laughs> the first two. Oh no and i understand why it was disappointing but um and i'm disappointed in it too i always will be but there's a lot more that it does right than wrong um just i hope future sequels learn from this don't do the mistakes this film did don't kill off your characters before they're on screen. But um, yeah, well done to it. I think it, considering it had every an impossible task, being a sequel to those two masterpieces, and it was a, a production hell. God damn, it shouldn't have turned out as awesome as it did. For me, I'd put this at A. Yeah, definitely an A. If I was to rate it out of 10, I'd say it's like an 8, maybe an 8, 8.5 for me. Interesting. Now, I'm going to turn for off me, the mic. <laughs> for me, this is like very low down on the list for me as far as alien three goes T to be fair i agree with most of what like badger was just saying there um but when it comes to alien three which and what i'm about to say you're going to be like what the hell are you talking about like they're all dark and depressing this one is so bleak it is so bleak and it like it opens up bleak like me and when me and my girlfriend were watching it she was like what Hicks and Newt are dead. I went, yes, yep, yep, yep. That's like the first five minutes of it. So you're like, you're already on a downer. 
And when you get to this planet, which almost looks like Redker, like in the northeast of England, like all these industrial like plants and oil mines, it, it looks good and it looks different for aliens. <laughs> what that? Where? Where in England? Please tell me so I can avoid it. I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 got a Redker. It's like this seaside beach area, but then it's got all these industrial like oil and mine and things. They all. It, it looks a bit like the uh, the warehouse in RoboCop where. Uh, Murphy died. Uh, but like steel anyway, mill. yeah, like the steel mill sort of thing. There we go, Andy. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, um, but yeah, the so it's, it's, yeah you're right. Horrible. But it it looks beautiful, but it just is so depressing. And the film never like it never claws its way out of the depressing bleak vibe. Like right never. up until the end, where like you got Sigourney Weaver and like I I do. I, I will agree with Badger. I think her performance in this film is amazing, especially the fact that she's dealing with a bunch of prisoners and stuff like that. Like, that's also a factor that I don't like about the film, the prisoner aspect of it. Like, I understand within context of the film that it's a good idea, but they just, because they all look visually quite similar, like, yep, I, I, I lose track a little bit uh -huh. sometimes, apart from... Yeah. The, the one gentleman who we've already talked about who is amazing in the film, he keeps all like his prisoners sort of like in 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 check in on a on a good path sort of type thing. Yeah. But then you've got Charles Dance's character who, if you ask me now, I only watched it a couple of days ago and I did watch the Assembly Cup, but I still couldn't tell you much about Charles Dance's character because his motivations in the fi film seem so cross-wired. I never know, like... I, I don't. It's possibly a good thing with his performance, but I never know if his intentions are right. Do you know what I mean? Like if he's morally a good character, which you. Oh wow. Well. I feel like because obviously there's like they have a relationship, her, him and Ripley, but then you get to the scene just before he dies, and it looks like he's about to inject her with like a shit ton of morphine or whatever it is. I don't know. It's just a bit fucking weird in that little. You know, like in the hospital bit where he, just, he asks, uh, he does ask her permission. He does ask. He does. Permission. He one hundred percent does, yeah. But it, it was always just it. I don't know. Something was a little bit off in that scene for me. But yeah, guys, like Alien Three for me is like one of my least favorites. It's not one I go back to. But I will say, as far like it's not a bad film by any stretch of the imagination. And like Badger was saying, with the production hell that it did go through, like Finch had done a pretty good job at making this a coherent story from start to finish, even with all the hell in the background, like. Georgia, my partner, she had no idea about any of the hell that's went on behind the scenes, but I can't wait to show her the uh, behind the scenes documentary. She was shocked that this was Fincher, to be fair, but I was like, yeah, this is like pretty right early on in his career. But yeah, Andy, Alien 3, have you got any any thoughts on this one, mate, at all? I don't, I don't really feel qualified, to be honest, to, to talk about Alien 3. Or, or the next one to go. Uh, that's no, fine. I'm just, that's, that's no, cool. I'm just coping out. I've I've seen both movies, but I haven't seen. I maybe seen. I've seen Alien Three one straight through, and I've seen it maybe caught parts of it on the TV a couple of times. And it's it's probably the one I'm most interested in checking out again, sitting down properly and watching. Because I don't think I've seen the assembly cut. I now have it on Blu-ray actually. Uh, so I would quite like to just sit and watch it again and, and properly kind of take it in. But I remember enjoying it, but a lot, of, a lot of what you said as well, Ellis, it just kind of like, it just feels a, a massive step down uh, uh, compared to the highs of like Aliens, you know, and Aliens is a, a very kinetic movie, shall we say, mm. for the most part. Yeah. And it's epic, it's got those fist pump moments that we just discussed. And this is like this kind of low key, almost like a stage play. Like it feels like, I can imagine this taking place on stage, you know, just remove the, the, the xenomorph from it and it would have been an interesting story in its own right, this woman landing oh, on wow. a colony full of prisoners, you know, and, never, and the whole... Never heard that. I've never heard that, and that is a goddamn good point. I've never heard anyone make that point. That is goddamn interesting, man. I agree. So I think it's, it's just listening to you there and you kind of reminded me of what, of what it's about and the themes, you know, and they're all kind of cons and they've all been bad to women in the past and, you know, they've been tempted. There, there, are, there are those kind of, like, gods connotations and religious connotations there which make it interesting in its own way but it's almost like the xenomorph gets in the way of the film like is, is if like someone's had an idea for this and they went could we just call it alien and just make mm. alien things slip a, a xenomorph yeah. in there and then it kind of gets in the way a wee bit like mm. because it, and then you and then it's got the impossible task of following up uh two absolutely yeah, phenomenal it's... movies now it, it wouldn't have mattered who took it on 
yeah. I, I don't think that anyone could go three for three. Because where do you go? Where do you really go? You, he's made a bold choice in going for a kind of low key drama and, and something yeah, that's more in the same vein as the original. So, I mean, David Finch has more than proved himself with his catalogue thereafter. And I didn't know that it went through so much production hell. So that's got me interested as well. Because I'm pretty sure that will be on the, my Blu ray, perhaps. Maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, first, so, no, I really want to watch that now. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm saying it real quick. First of all, I find it ironic that Andy knows the least about this film, but he made the most interesting points. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's so damn interesting. I like that. Um, and the next thing I'll say, because I'm going to make Andy laugh here, I made uh, Ellis almost faint when I told him this. No, the production, it's a lot worse than you think it was, Andy. The production was insanely stupid, so irresponsible. They make Sony look good. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? How much the company messed up? But at one point in one of the original cuts, like one of the original ideas, so shockingly bad. I cannot believe a five-year-old didn't come up with this. There was a scene in one of the original ideas where thousands of xenomorphs all stack up on top of each other and they start running around like a giant xenomorph attacking the <laughs> Oh my god. Do you remember they that, Alex? Well. Yeah, you know what? You know what like, it reminds me of? You know the blood. Yeah. There's a there's an alternative ending to Blade where instead of Stephen Dawes, oh, in, in, instead of God. him getting the red eyes and do the amazing sword fight they do, he turns into this big CGI blood god. So it's he's just a massive red blood <laughs> bubble. It's terrible, and he I've filmed it and everything as well. Yeah. It, I've seen it. It, it, it. That's obviously terrible. Thank God they didn't. Um. Thank God that didn't happen. Jesus, but no, I, I think this is. I think this is worse than that. I think that idea of thousands of xenomorphs stacking up on top of each other like a Power Ranger. Like, how did a five-year-old not come up with that? That is oh. baffling to me. Like, wow. So yeah, Andy, you're in for a treat. Great documentary behind the scenes there on your Blu-ray. I own it myself. I can stand up and say, check it out. You're in for a treat, my friend. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's shocking how much they screwed up, mate. It really is. Wow. Right, Badger. I'm going to let you have this one. I'm going to put it in A. I'm going to put it in A. Um, because... Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, why not? <laughs> now, now it's, now it's yeah. my turn to defend a shit movie. Oh, right. wait, 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 where oh, are you no, putting I put, I put the Alien. wrong one in there, sorry. Yeah. Right. Let's have a little chinwag <laughs> about uh, Alien Resurrection. Right. For some reason, people hate this film, and I don't understand why. I do not understand the logic in this one. For me, <laughs> one thing about these four... The four, the first four Alien films, right? You got the first one, very isolated. Second one, you've got the Marines. Third one, you've got the Prisoners. And this fourth one, you've got Bounty Hunters. I love it, man. This one more <laughs> like sort of like falls in line with Aliens. No, it's not directed by James Cameron, so it's not on that level whatsoever. I'm not trying to say that, guys. I'm just saying this one is pretty fun for what it is, and Ripley gets to be a little bit. You know, we see a new side of Ripley in this one, definitely for sure. Like she's a clone in this one, half half xenomorph in this film. Like it's very bizarre, very weird. Um, I think it's directed by like a, this French director. I haven't got his name right, but the film sort of reminds me, especially with like the aesthetics and the way it looks, what people are wearing and stuff. Like the fifth element, very like over the top sort of science fiction where like the clothes and stuff, like they look like the clothes from fifth element. It's got a very like lived in as they all do, but this one's particularly grimy. And then you've got the likes of Ron Perlman, who's just like awesome in the film. Do you know what I mean? Like he's got a great dynamic. He's one of the bounty hunters. You've got Michael Wincott with that amazing voice that he has, like obviously played, um, I think it was Top Dollar in The Crow around the same time. But mm. yeah, man, I love this one. It just gets so, so weird by the end of it when you introduce the newborn. I think it puts a lot of people off, like the newborn, the design of it. It's so crazy. I was watching it this morning when I got back in from work, right? So I never really noticed, but the newborn, have you, have you seen the teeth where the, it's like human teeth? And you're like, this is not scary whatsoever, but it's fucking disgusting. Do you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> It's it's it, it's one of them. It's it's totally weird and bizarre. Then you've got like Ripley, who like it was it was who's got these like motherly instincts. Like they haven't left from her being a like a mother and new in like aliens, but now it's a xenomorph. That she's like, ah, what the hell? It's crazy, guys. It's crazy. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of fun. 
And you got um, I think it's Brad Dorf in it, who was in like all the rings and stuff like that. He he's like one of the scientists at the start, and the way the, his relationship that he has with the xenomorphs and stuff like that, very weird. Like it just it I think for this for the fourth film in the franchise, they were like, right, guys, we've exhausted all aspects of this franchise. Let's just get super freaky and weird, man. And I'm 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 here, I'm here for it all day long, definitely. Uh, you've got Winona Ryder in here. That's like obviously she was like the height of a sort of powers in '97 when this was coming out. So yeah, it's it's a very '90s feeling sort of movie as well, guys. Like it it wears its decade on its sleeve a little bit. But <laughs> Aliens Resurrection, I'm a big fan of it. I think it's fun. So where you go out out of Alien Three, which I think's bleak and depressing, you go into this one, you're like, ah, we're having a bit of fun here. And you've got that awesome <laughs> basketball scene that I still don't know whether that was legit or not. But once you see, yeah, I know. But it's the only thing with that scene is that they didn't they didn't step back enough. But like, because the ball goes out of shot, doesn't it? Then comes back in. But you see the brief moment where Ron Perlman's about to go like that. But and, <laughs> Alien Resurrection, guys, if if you haven't seen it in a while, give it another go. It's it's a weird one. It, it gets pretty out there. You can totally see why they didn't make another one for so many years after this one. But you know, <laughs> give shit a chance. Give Are shit you really chance. silly. Cheers, mate. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> but uh, I, I I gave Badger the A on Alien Three because this one for me is a B on here. I know people are dying to put it in C and D, but it ain't fucking happening, folks. Anyway, Badger. <laughs> Alien Resurrection, do you love this one as much as me? Oh, God, no. But, I'm a <laughs> no, but at the same time, I'm a, I'm a believer at the same time. Uh, so, look, let me just say this real quick. Um, Alien Resurrection is another one of those um, entries, uh, sequel entries that I do not see as canon. I don't. Um, I see this as expensive fan fiction, nothing more. I cannot watch the first three films and believe that one day this somehow happens. <laughs> Fair, fair. I can't. I just can't. I don't. It's. I don't understand how the hell they cloned Ripley. How the hell did they find her DNA like in the lava and all that crap? Or yeah, I, it yeah. makes no sense. It's really stupid. The atmosphere is silly and goofy in many ways. It's a silly movie. Okay, it is. I don't see it as canon. It's expensive fan fiction. That being said, this is some fun expensive fan fiction. <laughs> it's not canon. Oh God, no. But, um, oh my goodness, this is fun in areas, man. This is fun. There are some fantastic sequences. I don't give a damn what anyone says. All of you come at me. That freaking water scene is brilliant, man. Awesome. So that, good. The, the xenomorphs under the water and all the actors, there's no stunt doubles. All the actors yeah. are holding their breath for ages, hanging out underwater, just chasing, being chased by these aliens. It's a great sequence. Really good. It's such a well done scene. Like at the end of it, when they've got, you know, they've set up the trap, you know, the aliens, there's a load of eggs waiting for them when they get air at the end. When they yeah, finally yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Brilliant. The whole thing is so well done. Sure, the CGI looks pretty naff at times, but I don't really give a damn about that. Um, besides, some of the effects looked awful in Alien 3, so I'll, I'll forgive it here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does so much right. Um, first of all, another thing I want to quickly quickly say is that the director is French. Apparently he couldn't speak English when he made the film at all, so we had to have a translator there. So there was a disconnect when he was trying to get his point across. <laughs> when you watch the film, it's like, no shit, I can see that. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're odd. The dialogue is weird and cheesy. Um, but I like the chemistry between some of the characters and Ron Perlman. I don't care. I think he's cool. I like him. Yeah, this was my introduction to him. I love the guy. He's one of the best character actors ever. His voice is iconic. Love him so much. He was great in Blade 2. And um, yeah. Hellboy is great. Sons of Anarchy. Mwah. Just love the guy. I thought he was wonderful in it. That guy who you talked about, I can't remember his name, the brother with the real cool voice. What's his name? He's got an amazing voice. He was in The Crow. He was good. Oh, in Michael it. Wincott. There we, there we go. Yeah, what was it he said? Like, yeah, she is severely fuckable, isn't she? I was like, you creepy. Yeah, yeah, we know on a rider. Yeah, you creepy bastard. But yeah, it's cool. There's another thing I like in it, small detail. I like that whole whiskey scene, how they make whiskey. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's a weird little, like, weird little cube. It looks like an ice cube, but it's got whiskey in it, but it's, like, dehydrated. It's just a cube. Then they laser it and turns into a liquid, and then they drink from it. I was like... 
cool idea little details like that i expect to see that in blade runner for crying out loud this is cool i like these little things it's got some good moments now i do not like the uh newborn all that much i respect the effort it took to make it mm. it looks goddamn impressive like it's actually real it's practical but that nose and everything dude it just looked like it to me it looked like someone gave birth to michael jackson again i just didn't like it, it was, yeah, what the heck is this, man? It looked like Michael Jackson if you went sunbathing. And I was like, what is this, fam? Like, you can't do this to me. I don't like it. I really don't like it much at all. But it's fun. It's it's mediocre, trashy fun. Oh, my goodness. I'm never bored watching this film. I wouldn't go as far to say it's a good film. But I don't laugh at it. I laugh with it. I think it's goddamn fun. I just wish it wasn't the last time we saw Sigourney Weaver physically playing his... Uh, Play it as Ripley. I wish that wasn't the last time. I wish we got to see it again in a better film. Thankfully, it's not the last time she played as her. She also played as her in the Alien game, Alien Isolation. Remarkable video game. Terrifying. I was happy to see her voice in that. But yeah, the last time we saw her play as that was this stupid-ass clone. Oh, no. Um, whatever. Either way, it's good. And oh, and the basketball scene there is a behind the scenes showing it it was real when she did the backwards shot she did, tried it just once nothing but net went straight in amazing <laughs> um yeah fun film man fun but for me yeah see i've got to be realistic i've got to go see out of 10 i'd say it's five maybe 5.5 5. so fun so fun right andy alien resurrection can you remember much about this one i can't remember a thing about it. <laughs> uh, other than that, I, I remember two things. I remember that there is an underwater sequence, which yeah. tells me that it must have been quite good, because if it's the only thing that I vaguely remember. And I remember being freaked out by uh, Ripley kind of like inappropriately rolling about with the alien oh. and, and the whole weird, like, that, that kind of sexual connotation. Like, that stuck yeah. out for me. It was like, this is a bit yeah. yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. It gets freaking weird, man. I love it. Like, this is a bit weird. And then, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember being quite pretty, like, uh, feeling pretty uneasy about that. What, what, what are you calling it? The, the kid thing? The kid newborn. What we, is that what it's known as? The newborn. Yeah, yeah, There's the a scene newborn. where she's like caressing it and all that, and yeah, the nose to nose with it and everything, isn't that? That's, oh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. I found that a bit difficult to get over, if I'm honest. I, I remember watching and kind of thinking, what is, what is this? Like, what. what Direction we're going in here, you know, we're, we're, kind of like what you say, man. It's like we're, we're far away, far away from that. Your dog, you know, in the first one, where, where she's like terrified of it and wanting to blow out that she's having a proper human reaction to that thing, you know. And now, now she's conceiving them, you know, and she's mothering it and all that. That's my nonsense. When we've just seen her be, when we've just seen her sacrifice herself in the, the previous one, you know, it's a bit of a stretch. But if you like it, mate, then. More power to you, like it's like, like Badger said, it's maybe a, it's when it gets to that stage in that franchise, it's about you know, you found some people like people like the lore and all that. And if you turn out a film, no matter how bad it is or good it is, there'll always be some fans that take something from it. So, and you're obviously one of those, Ellis. So, I, I'll watch it again. I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch, I think I might skip Alien because I've seen it a lot, loads, but I'm definitely going to do Aliens, Alien 3. And, I'm going to do Aliens, Alien 3, and Resurrection, because I've watched Prometheus and Covenant recently. Yeah, I'd love yeah, to get so, your thoughts on uh, the last two, Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't like, know, where, I, I think just C probably, yeah, same with Badger. Like, I remember not being massively offended, but not thinking it was anything memorable. Right, I'll go see for that one. Right, guys. I am run out of time right now. I need to go because my work shift starts in 10 minutes. Let's be quick, so man. Let's, we're just going to get, I'm going to go both Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Prometheus, just really quick thoughts on these two guys. But Prometheus, for me, I really enjoy it. Is it's like own self-contained story. I love the score. I love the, the new technology that's in it, even though it doesn't make sense because it's pre-Alien, but it looks far newer. Mm -hmm. um, I really love it. Really stupid scientists in it. I get that. I, I've never, every time I watch it, I think, yeah, these morons in here, get them the hell out. But aesthetically, I love it. And I like that sort of that Ridley was asking the question, how and where, when it comes to the xenomorphs. Alien Covenant, 
I don't really have a good time with, to be fair, because I think the CGI in the last act is so egregious for a film that was doing pretty well up until a certain point when shit hits the fan in Covenant. I, I, I don't, I don't like it anymore. It's just like the, the CGI alien hanging off the, the xenomorph hanging off the ship at the end. It doesn't look good at all. And it left a bad taste in my mouth, if I'm being honest. I'd have much rather I had Neil Blomkamp's sequel at that point when Alien Covenant was coming out. But um, they're my two thoughts on, on those films, guys. If I was going to rank them in this, in this ranking, I would honestly put Prometheus between B and A, like I, I do really enjoy that, and I would go Covenant as a solid B. But um, yeah, Badger, quick thoughts on these two, mate. Quick thoughts, quick thoughts. So yeah, look, this was one of the most uh, anticipated films I had ever I'd seen. Like I couldn't wait to see it. Saw it, and unlike most people, I actually loved it. And I'm not really its audience because it's too big and epic, as you said. It's set before Alien. Uh, yeah, it looks far newer. It's very strange, very peculiar, but at the same time, how it went away from Alien just set in the universe and then tried something new, big and big and epic and all that with these big grand ideas. I liked it. Sure, some of the characters were sucky, but I still wanted to get to know them more. I liked them. David is a great character and was in the second one as well. And very interesting. The uh, biggest problem I got with it was what it did with the space jockeys. Uh, the retconning the space jockeys into being, oh, look, it's us. It's just a suit inside It's inside of the suit. It's just a big, bold human. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it at all, really. So, yeah, I I, I kind of love it, but it's very flawed. Uh, Alien Covenant, I've only seen once, and that was when it was brand new. Um, I love, remember liking it, but it made no sense to me. Uh, load of it just made no sense. Loads of plot holes. I don't know how David was the one who created the aliens. It makes no sense to me, because in the in Prometheus, you could see alien Queen Alien artwork in the background in the tunnels, and for some reason he made them, even though there's evidence they existed before. Weird. So weird. But you know what? As flawed as it was, I do remember enjoying it, and um, yeah, I just don't know if those two films are canon anymore, because it looks like we might not get a continuation, and it just makes no sense how it stemmed the Alien films. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, whatever. Then for me, A and B, I guess. A and B. Mm-hmm. Andy, mate, quick thoughts on, on these mate, two. So I would just, I would just say BB. I think they're both. BB. I think, I think, I think Prometheus has maybe got a slight edge. I'd agree with you. Like maybe it could be between A and B. Uh, I'd go A and B. I, I enjoyed them both. I, I like. I'm not massive fans of of the fran- of, I'm not a huge diehard fan of the Alien franchise. Casual, as I've said from the beginning. But I, I really enjoyed Prometheus and Covenant. I thought Covenant had a fantastic end, and I didn't look too much. Yeah. It's interesting what you're saying there, Badger, about the yeah, but it's kind of undermined by the, what what had happened in Prometheus that there was evidence to the contrary. But mm-hmm. Fastbender is a huge yeah. Fastbender is a big plus in both these films. He raises the game, and Ridley Scott coming back brings a bit, a bit of a sophistication and believability. Absolutely, back. it was it was missing after like Resurrection. So you know, there's just that little bit of class there. So I liked it, and I thought that. I thought the cover covenant's in them was brilliant. The, and it's, it's it's how cold Fastbender is. Oh, but you can see it coming a little bit, but it's still cold. Yeah. So that, that yeah. final, and I, I've always wanted to see the continuation of that. So yeah, just same. because of how good the end, the, how chilling that ending is, but this is yeah. going to happen. Even if there's a little yeah. nod to it in the new one, because it, it, it's interesting what you said about them being set between each other. Yeah. Yeah, all right, but Prometheus and the Covenant were since set so long ago that technically that ship could have been floating about for decades. Un- yeah, yeah. So, so they could touch on it in, the, in, that, in that middle one. Even if it's just to kind of tie it off, it doesn't necessarily need to be a massive story point. But... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. Both and, um, films, I think. And, and dead quick, dead quick, Andy, what do you think of Alien vs. Predator 1 and 2? Go on, real quick, real quick. <laughs> One's a solid six out of ten, three out of five. You can have fun with it. Seen it in the cinema, enjoyed it. And two is laughably dog shit. Like I watched it just the other night. There, and it's just so bad, man. If you like, can have it, see it, it's that bad. like a teen. It's like a teen, teen slasher at times. It's just yeah, terrible. Like, he's going down the drain and all that. And the guy rooting through shit. Like he's just a phone to A. That pissed me off. Like who on earth would go down into a drain like that? Just to get keys, but you can just fucking throw in the air. Like, you're just not going to do that. It's so much shit. <laughs> oh, All right, guys. <laughs> anyway, guys, we're going to have to leave it there. I've got to run now. It was a stream and dash for me. I've, I start work in four minutes. It's fine. It's got a 20-minute <laughs> drive. 
You got um, a teleport on the back. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. But um, thanks for watching, guys. Badger and Andy, thanks for coming on the stream as always, guys. Cool. Um, there's a few videos on the channel if you want to check it out. A couple of reviews. Me and Andy did one for Roadhouse. Check that one out. I've got a Ghostbusters review on there. Just a quick thought on that one. Um, Paul couldn't join me for that one. But yeah, guys, um, this has been a Total Movie Recall live stream. Thanks for watching. We'll see you not next week, but the week after. See you later, folks. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye. Peace.